my name is Dr. Jessica Rose, and uh, I am a computational biologist with degrees in applied mathematics, immunology, computational biology, uh, biochemistry, and molecular biology. Uh, as par for the course of my academic career, I've done a lot of data analysis. And so part of that has been of late uh, analyzing the VAERS data system, which is the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System of the United States. And um, I've been finding some, some concerning things in VAERS. VAERS is a pharmacovigilance tool that's meant to detect safety signals and uh, it's throwing off safety signals left, right, and center. Uh, one of them that everybody's been talking about of great concern, especially for young males, is myocarditis. So over a year ago, I penned a paper with Peter McCullough, who's a world-renowned cardiologist, um, about what's going on in VAERS with respect to myocarditis reports. Uh, not only are there an excessive number when you compare the reports to the past 30 years of VAERS data, but there's a prevalence of reports in young boys, especially 15-year-old boys, and it's dose-related. So the prevalence of reporting of myocarditis in 15-year-old boys is, or at the time of the, the penning of this paper, was six-fold higher following dose two. So this was a descriptive analysis of myocarditis reports in VAERS. It was non-controversial. It was fully published. It was on PubMed, immortalized forever. Um, we had paid the, uh, the uh, publisher for color uh, illustrations for effect. We signed the contract. Um, it was a done deal, peer reviewed. What happened was, uh, I got notified and Peter got notified separately by separate entities saying that the words uh, temporarily withdrawn was written beside the title of our paper. We were, we were in the pre-proof phase where we were waiting to approve the final proofs for publication, the very last step. And sure enough, I, I refreshed my browser and these words were written beside the title and in, in the place of the text, there was something about, we'll, we'll put it back when something is resolved. So immediately I emailed the editor in chief and the publisher and I, I said, hey, what's going on? You know, in the politest way that I could, because I honestly had no idea. I'm a, I'm a young scientist, so I, I didn't know if this was something they did. But according to all of my expert colleagues, no, this is not something that's done. It's very atypical. Um, we didn't hear back from the uh, publisher until the next day when they informed us that uh, the paper, because it had not been an invited paper, they were reconsidering publishing, which was nonsense. Peter McCullough is uh, he's a veteran in this uh, field, and in B, he's an editor of a journal, etc., and he told them immediately, no, here are some examples of uninvited papers that you have published. Please reinstate the paper or we'll litigate. So about a week later, we didn't hear anything. And then they said, we've decided finally not to publish the paper because it's our prerogative not to do so. So within their um, documented uh, you know, notification framework, they claim that uh, at any point during the publication process, they can terminate the process. So they did. It's in limbo to this day. Uh, I asked, uh, Peter and I are in constant communication. I asked for an update. Uh, it's, it's, it's just sitting in the litigation phase. So the, the worst part is um, that all the material they're in uh, wasn't able to be read by the parents, by the physicians, by the children, by anyone, by the scientific community, by the cardiologists. And, and it's a year, a year that's gone by. That's the part that really annoys me uh, about this being in limbo for so long. Um, because there are an enormous number of publications coming out now and case studies and reports that are saying exactly what we found a year ago. And, and there are millions of people, I'm not exaggerating, that have probably been affected 
affected by this in that time frame. So, so this was knowingly censored without reason. No reason has been given to this day. We could have just, uh, you know, reclaimed the rights and published or attempted to publish somewhere else. But it's the principle, in my opinion. Uh, I think Peter and I are of the same mind in this regard. And it's it's gone so far now, uh, it's gone nowhere, but it's taken so much time now that it kind of feels like, you know, this paper was, its destiny is not to be published anymore. And the purpose of publishing it would have been much uh, more um, relevant a year ago. So now that we have all these other publications coming out, case studies and reports, it's less important for this material to come out as a publication. Perhaps maybe its destiny is to serve as an example of censorship, for example, being overcome. So that would be the optimal outcome. Uh, you know, may maybe we'll succeed sometime in the future to have the paper um, reinstated or at least bring attention to this subject matter because we're not the only ones, of course. Yeah, that doesn't really bother me. I, I suppose it should because, I mean, people seem really obsessed with Twitter, but I could care less. I I mean, I suppose I did some good. I was there all of two and a half months or so. I accumulated 50,000 followers, which was like a lot of people. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, of course it bothers me, but it's, it's I, I call it a cesspool and I kind of mean that. And I think it's really, really heavily bombarded by bots in the first place. And if not bots, then human trolls who are literally paid to, to just be there to, to take down other people. So I, I'm, I'm part of another group who uh, is kind of, kind of obsessed with fighting back against uh, these people. Um, but yeah, I, I can't, sign into my LinkedIn anymore. Um, so that's another uh, interesting thing. Um, I, I backed away from Facebook a long time ago. Uh, I was a Facebook fiend because I'm also a photographer and I really enjoyed sharing my photos. Uh, but I didn't like um, I didn't like where they were going. I kind of never liked what they represented. Um, uh, pushing uh, pushing advertising and, and uh, censorship, et cetera. You, you know all about that. Um, so yeah, that's about as much uh, censorship as I've had in my life so far, but it doesn't feel good. Um, I, well, I've had three YouTube videos taken down too, and that, that feels really bad because I have a long history with YouTube. Like, I think I've had an account since they were kind of incepted. And those videos are kind of like, for me, they're like my personal stuff. So it's like surfing videos or like videos of places I've visited or educational videos of late. So to have some stranger or a bot come along and take those down, um, that that's very strange because the ones they took down, of course, are the educational videos. I mean, one was a one minute clip of how to calculate the underreporting factor. <laughs> Why would you censor that? And and I didn't even get to upload it. They took down this video I made to calculate the underreporting factor um, before it even got up. So it was kind of bizarre. But the the funniest part is the the video that's gotten almost seventy thousand views. I think, which is huge for me. Um, which is one of the very first kind of slide by slide. This is what VAERS is showing, analyses, complete with phylogenetic trees, et cetera, and predictions. So that's still there. So if they were, <laughs> if, I don't know, I don't get it. If this was about VAERS and, and you know, disinformation about uh, analyzing VAERS data, then you'd think that they would take that one down. <laughs> Not that I'm asking them to, but it's a bit weird. I mean, I'm censored all over the place. Uh, I've gotten a lot of people kicked off Twitter too. Because <laughs> they post my, like, just a slide or something. And and uh, I suppose maybe they use the wrong keyword. And so, yeah, I've gotten a lot of people booted from Twitter. 
<laughs> Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I'm sure I've gotten a lot of people booted from Facebook too, because the Facebook communities are still trying really hard, especially the injured communities. And of course, you know, this, this is what I'm doing. I'm representing, I'm hope I'm hoping to represent the injured people and to give them a bit of a voice through what I'm doing. So yeah, they um I'm sure they're having a hard time on Facebook. Well, actually, the worst effect that it's having, from what I can ascertain, is the dis dissolution of the, the groups of people that are forming spontaneously who are injured, who really need each other. They, they need each other for psychological reasons, because there's so much like cajoling and, and uh, gaslighting going on of, of the people who know they've been injured by these COVID products. Um, they're finding each other and it's not easy because you have to be kind of brave enough. It's insane that I have to say it that way, but to just say, uh, this happened to me a few hours after the shot. Did this happen to anyone else? And when you find a hundred thousand other people who are saying the same thing, that's magical. And then you can also seek uh, physical help if you need it or, or exchange doctor information. So to have that dissolved by some bot or troll or entity or, or arrangement between CDC and FDA or, or whoever it is controlling, you know, the, the, language or the groups formed on Facebook, that's really horrific because those people lose their community that they're really relying on. And I, I mean, really relying on. I know Brie Dressen personally, uh, she was injured by the AstraZeneca product. She's in, she was in the clinical trial and she, she has horror stories. Um, I mean, she read a letter from someone who ended up, uh, taking their own life. Um, the, the, one, of, one of the adverse events reported in the context of these shots is depression in people who weren't depressed before. And we know that it's causing neurological damage. So it's nasty, it's malevolent. And I would go as far as to say it's evil because it's, 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 there's no, nothing constructive about it. They're not spreading misinformation or disinformation. They're just trying to find a community of people that they can talk to about what's happening to them. And you can't debunk a personal experience. You can't. You can't troll that either. But for the average person who was always trusting their government, their public health officials, you know, yes, I'm going to get my child injected and yes, it's time. And okay, I have to get them their shots now. How many of those people are now saying, hmm, I don't know about this anymore. And not just about the COVID nonsense. I'm talking about all the stuff. So I, I think that's kind of backfiring on them in the States. I'm not sure what's going on everywhere else. You know, uh, you, you can always hope that people will have access access to information no matter how much censorship comes to um and just learn the simple truths there's nothing complicated about what's happened here our regulatory bodies have failed us uh everything's become um everything's been infiltrated by the business model of uh of profiteering uh big pharma profiteering it's 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 only about that there's no public health here Let's get our product on the market on the childhood vaccination schedule. We'll make billions every year. You know, there's no liability. You can't sue anyone. So why not? Uh, I have a website called Jessica's Universe where you can find most of the bear stuff. And you'll also find uh, all my interviews. And so there's a lot of them there. The substacks are uh, more about news um, and summary of uh, scientific articles. It's, it's not easy to read a scientific journal, especially the ones with a lot of uh, immunological jargon in it. So I, I break that down because it's kind of what I do. Uh, and one time I, I repasted uh, 
a personal email because I get a lot of personal emails from people um, with her permission, of course, uh, to rep uh, repost her experience as a pregnant woman, um, just trying to go through the normal stuff that you go through when you're pregnant, like getting, uh, I don't know, an amnio if you want, or, uh, you know, getting the photograph of the baby or finding out the gender or whatever. Um, her experience was horrific. Uh, the pressure to get injected all throughout her pregnancy that got the most uh, reads and likes of any Substack. I've, I, I, had, I didn't write it, so I, I just, it was so valuable because that's what I love about Substack. There's, there, there isn't any censorship going on there. So the real people and the community of Substackers is really lovely and they're very intelligent. Um, they're just, it's, it's like this thing I was saying before about the interaction between the real people who, who just want to share their stories and find out that they're not crazy if they're feeling a certain way. Uh, yeah, of course I've been slandered. Um, I've had a couple hit pieces written on me and I've written a couple pieces on Substack about that experience. Um, uh, one of them is called My Take on Hit Pieces and everyone should read that. Um, it's kind of like a etymological... Um, assessment of like the structure of a hit piece so that you can recognize one even from the title from from the language so yeah it, it's not fun it's kind of like that weird experience of getting censored by youtube felt it, it was it, it's kind of it's very creepy because it's personalized and this stranger that you've never met before who didn't try and reach out to you didn't email you, hey, I'd like to ask you a few questions about this. Um, just kind of writes wrong stuff. I mean, there's nobody that knows your truth better than you. <laughs> so when somebody publicly writes something uh, that's not true about you, it, it's weird. It's like, why are you doing that? That that's my question. And 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 I've written to every single one of these people, the ones that I've I've been told about. And I'm like, why did you do that? Like, do, do you want to have a discussion with me? Like, and I've always invited them to have an open discussion and you never you never get a, an affirmative response. Of course you don't because their motivation is to slander, it's not to learn. So um, w one of the unfortunate parts about that um, is uh, you have to respond in certain, um, to certain people. Uh, which is such an enormous uh, energy drain, which is why they do it. They want to suck you into the energy drain. So you spend all of your time rebutting nonsense instead of doing your research. Um, so I've had to do that a couple of times, but I, I've actually asked my friends, like, can you not send me those things anymore? Because I don't want to know they exist. You know, ignorance is bliss in a way. <laughs> I've said this a few times in a few interviews. I, I'm driven by uh, my heart uh, and I, I can't do anything that isn't kind of coming from my heart. So I, I actually genuinely love, love uh, the fields of immunology, virology, um, anything to do with science. It doesn't matter. I mean, I, I'm I'm intrigued by it all. Uh, so, and I'm re I get really excited about data. And, and when the shift happens, if it does, um, it, it's not going to be this big drama that I think a lot of people are hoping for. It's not going to be like a, you know, a hero riding in a stallion. It's going to happen quietly. And most people won't even know that the band of merry men that have been fighting day and night for years succeeded. Uh, it's not going to be me. It's not going to be only Peter. It's not going to be Rob. It's going to be everything that's just going to coalesce by 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 having a certain percentage of the masses. I don't know what the word is. Wake up, I suppose, is is what most people are using. So, yeah, it, it's going to be quiet, though. I, I anticipate. <laughs>